But all this... All this served to distract from the really important business going down in Washington this week concerning the Senate's new Obamacare replacement bill, the Better Care Reconciliation Act. It was released on Thursday ahead of a likely vote next week, and it was quickly denounced by many Democrats. Barack Obama took to Facebook uh, to say it would raise costs, reduce coverage, roll back protections, and ruin Medicaid as we know it. And you know what? Obviously, Obama objects to repealing the ACA. His parents literally named him after Obamacare. Of course <laughs> he would say that, so put that aside. But meanwhile, in the Senate, Chuck Schumer engaged in some uh, spectacular prop comedy. When the White House passed their health care bill, a bill that President Trump called mean, I thought it wouldn't be possible for the Senate Republicans to conjure up a bill even worse than that one. Unfortunately, that is what they have done. Meaner, can you read it? Do I have to color it in? Yeah, you do. How's that? Right there. Meaner. Oh my God. No. If political theatre were actual theatre, that was the equivalent of someone falling to their death in Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. <laughs> now, as for the content of the bill, it is set to hurt a lot of people because the BCRA preserves much of what was objectionable in the House bill, like tax cuts for the wealthy and deregulation that would make it possible for insurers to drastically cut their coverage. And when it comes to Medicaid spending, this new version is in some ways even harsher than it was before. The House bill would end Medicaid expansion in three years and give states a block grant to fund Medicaid as they see fit. The Senate version phases out Medicaid expansion more slowly, starting in 2021, but makes deeper cuts to the overall Medicaid program by sharply reducing federal funding over time. So the House bill would cut Medicaid relatively quickly, whereas the Senate bill would do it more slowly but far more drastically. And both of those options are deadly. It's basically choosing between getting run over by a drunk driver or getting run over by a drunk elephant. <laughs> and, you know, that, that poor elephant has been going through a rough patch since her divorce. Oh, that's right. I said her. Hashtag lady elephants can commit involuntary manslaughter. Hashtag feminism. And, and to be clear... To be clear, those cuts will have massive impacts. Right now, Medicaid covers 20% of all Americans, 49% of births, 60% of children with disabilities, and 64% of all nursing home residents. So, unless you are a professional beach volleyball player with a vasectomy who is estranged from his family and who plans to jump into a volcano at age 35, you or someone you know desperately needs these services. Now, you may have heard some Republicans have come out against this bill in its current form. Some uh, because it's too harsh, uh, others because it is not harsh enough, and of course Ted Cruz is in that group. <laughs> of course he is. He's the only man in history whose personality somehow contracted bed bugs. <laughs> but but I here's the thing. I would be very careful relying on those politicians to hold out. Just this morning, Rand Paul suggested he might vote for the bill if they needed him, and Ron Johnson said he wasn't a no, he was just a not yes yet. Which isn't so much a courageous stance as it is not a cowardly stance yet. <laughs> And that is the sort of thing that means that you should be very wary of any coverage with this kind of tone. Today on Face the Nation, the Republican Senate health care bill is on life support. Is the plan to repeal and replace Obamacare on life support? A Senate plan that, as it stands, is dead on arrival. It would seem, as things stand right now, uh, the Republican version of the bill is dead on arrival. Oh, that's great. It's dead on arrival. Then kick back and relax, everyone, because I haven't felt this confident about an outcome since Tuesday, November the 8th, 2016. <laughs> the point is, the point is, there is every chance that absent huge effort to stop it, this bill may well pass. So resisting complacency would be, to borrow a truly moronic phrase, not very stupid, I can tell you that. <laughs> and now, this. <laughs> 